get right into the podcast and uh probably do like some interview question type stuff and then uh if we uh if it's flowing good we'll probably do like a couple segments news story stuff like that smooth all right here we go <clears throat> Hey, welcome to another episode of the Blackout Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we are live on a Sunday afternoon in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes. Or Sunday morning if you're on the other coast. <laughs> yes. Uh, but we are here to do some podcasts and you can find us everywhere you find podcasts. Just put the Blackout Tips in. Leave us five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. We like to read those on Saturdays. It makes us feel good. The official weapon of the show is Taser. an unofficial sport Football. and bullet ball extreme. And we're not alone, as you've probably seen from the show description, possibly the title, definitely the show notes. Mm -hmm. We have a guest. Today's guest is stand up comedian, playwright for Hidden Fences, The Color Urkel, uh, TV writer for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Abbott Elementary, and Atlanta on FX. It's Jordan Temple. What's going on, bro? What's up, man? Y'all living? Just woke Great, up man. 30 minutes ago, feeling good about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, when uh, we were uh, coordinating this, you know, behind the scenes, it was like, uh, okay, what time you want to start or whatever? You know, we basically tell the guests the earliest we can start and let them pick, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I said, yeah, we can start at uh, anywhere from like 10 a.m. our side or whatever. And he's on the West Coast. And he's like, oh, yeah, 11 a.m., 8 a.m. my time. I'm like, okay, on a Sunday. Whoa, this brother is industrious. <laughs> <laughs> like, Early morning. I'm like, on the West Coast, all right, 8 a.m., okay, brother. I'm going to be up then. Yeah, you know? I, I've been over there, and uh, the, the time ch changes something else. Because when we was over there, I was waking up 6 a.m. my time, which was like 3 a.m. y'all time. And I had to literally force myself to go back to sleep every night because if yeah. I didn't, I mean, every morning, because if I didn't, I would be drained by like noon. Mm -hmm. but, um, Jordan, let me ask you this, man. Um, how you get started in this whole like comedy thing? You know, I know you're a native New Yorker mm -hmm. um, and I was listening to some podcasts you were on and stuff as, as a guest. And uh, I know you were talking about how being born in New York, you're already in the quote unquote big city of dreams. But since mm -hmm. you live there, it's kind of like, uh, you almost forget you can just step outside, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and, and try to get on those paths. So how, what was your start? Yeah, um, well, I'm from I'm from Queens, you know. It's like an out of borough kind of feel has more, I think, more um, groundedness, more energy, you know. Um, places, you know, when people come to New York, they fly in to Queens. They don't even know they're there. You know what I'm saying? They're just like, oh, this feels far from where I want to be. And then <laughs> they never stay. It's the best kept secret. We like, all right, cool, cool. You're going to find out. You know what I'm saying? We're not, just, <laughs> we're not just airports and the Mets, you know, even though, yeah. This is a bunch of stuff people feel like is like B rated or B sides, mm. where it's like, it's kind of the best kept secret. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, I love just being from from uh, Queens and, you know, out of boroughs kind of gave me the energy of like just trying to not have a, just like a city. It's like city mentality. It's like a small town in a big town, even though mm -hmm. like Queens, the borough itself is bigger than most cities. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. And then uh, and so being from Queens and whatnot, I know New York has like, you know, the, probably the number one place for stand up and stuff. Was it like stand up that you started first? Was it like um, play stuff? Or, you know, was it was it school, early school? Like, what what was the path there? I started improv. Um, I did it through four hundred one and stuff, and then like I like I paid for one hundred one, um, and then through the rest, I just like uh, I were, like wrote an essay for a scholarship because it was like hella white. It was spaces I wasn't used to. So I bounced around. I went to like a lot of high schools and like the bubbles and shit I was in. I just like, yeah, I was just used to being like with black people and people of color. And I was, I'm from the project. So like, I didn't really, I don't really like hang out with white people except like sprinklings at school. But, uh, you know, it wasn't something I was used to until I started comedy, you know. How, how did you learn how to navigate those spaces with it being so different than what you're normally from? Well, I was I was kind of like used to, I mean, like a story of Queens is kind of like a melting pot a bit. So I kind of was just like, 
you know, like there they are, you know. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, people like, you know, it's kind of like when Toni Morrison was being asked, you know, like uh, about Invisible Man. She was like, Invisible, she was basically like saying what this today's version would be like, Invisible Man is mid, basically. <laughs> right. she, was basically like, she was like, Invisible to who? You know, she's like, right. I'm write stories for us you know that's how i felt that's mm. how I felt. like i'll be around them but you know and i know how to move because i'm not trying to really be seen by them <laughs> you right. know what I'm yeah. so it's like when it's in that it's like yeah i can get along with you i'm just gonna go back home you know what i'm saying i'm gonna go do yeah. one, two we can hang out but you ain't you know what i'm saying so you know that was kind of my mindset at least uh you know i um was an improv because I wanted to do that shit and they just right. so be there then I go home. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of interesting because I think uh it's especially you being from New York, Queens, uh, and I know this is true like with, at least with my upbringing in Charlotte, you know, my home and everything in my home was black. You know what I'm saying? My neighborhood, uh uh projects I was born in, all that shit is black. But then like as I started achieving it's like you get moved into this other path where you just be around white people, whether you want to or not. It's just like, this is where the resources are. So if you get in an academically gifted class, all of a sudden this, this is a, a wider class than the class I was in. You know, if you get um, scholarships, internships, all that type of shit, you know, I, I did an internship with IBM for a bit. I, I fucking hated it. And I was like the only black kid there. So it is like this kind of thing where, um, you do have to work, work uh, learn how to navigate it, but it is to me. I thought it was easier. To, it was kind of easy to navigate because they don't really be checking for you. You know what I mean? Like it's they cool with you going back home to your crib. They're not really trying to do the barbecue or whatever. They like, all right, cool. It was nice, Rod. Right? Uh, five o'clock. See you later. Um, <laughs> right. And uh, it's interesting that like uh, artist space. I think people don't see it the same because people see like uh artists as like life you know what i'm saying like that's your whole life so if you in improv these people your friends but it sounded like it was kind of like work for you where you was like all right cool five o'clock back to the crib y'all mm -hmm. have a good one see y'all the next class yeah i, I was kind of moving around also my brother um kind of i have an older brother and he kind of felt like he had to go out into those spaces first and i kind of learned a little bit vicariously through him a little bit he went to Overland. So like I would, my mom a couple times, maybe two, three times a year, either picking him up or going to visit him. He would like, you know, we would go drive, eight hour drive to Overland, Ohio and, you know, see Amish people stay in the Motel 6, the whole thing. Like it was wild. And seeing wow. my brother and just seeing that campus kind of opened my eyes a little bit, you know what I mean? And just going, so going to his, yeah. Uh, well, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't cut you off. No, nah, no. Nah, I was just saying, I mean, yeah, I, no, I definitely do agree, though. Like, the the more, I guess, opportunities, the more you step outside that immediate bubble. You know, I, I always felt no matter who I was uh, friends with, associated with, black, white, or whatever, like, home for me is, like, wherever my grandma was. So, mm -hmm. she was funny. She was funny as hell. So, I was like, as long as my grandma's alive, nobody can tell me I'm black. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, mine too. Peg. Huh? Right? I'm yeah, like, my grandma Peg, man. I, I still say that's where I get all my humor from, man. She, mm -hmm. she was funny. She was so funny. And then uh, my favorite thing about her is she would talk shit about you, but to your face. You know what I mean? But but love you. Like it wasn't like. Uh, I think that's why I, I have that sense of humor. That you know, if you're my friend, like you gotta take a little bit of ribbon. I gotta take a little bit for you, or else we really don't count as friends yet. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, it, it, that that's a home. You know, it, it's in a person, but it's it's, it's becomes to be a place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, with the improv thing, like, was it like you said? Okay, I'm doing improv. I'm learning. I'm taking these exercises with me, and now I'm about to go write a play. Or was it like, like, um, what's the what's the leap oh, between yeah, that? And yeah, that? Of, yeah. So yeah, just I guess chronologically a bit. And this feels like less um, like repetitive, I guess, because I'm, I'm talking to black people. People be like, so how'd you get into the thing? And I'm like, 
Yeah, but y'all ain't playing Kendrick before the podcast start. You know, <laughs> like when it's like whenever we have a guest on for the first time, I try to be conscientious of like introducing them a bit to the to the viewers because uh you know sometimes i i mean i could just hop in like this is my nigga joy now you know we just our first time virtually meeting and be like anyway so what you think about this school shooting you know i wanted to kind of be like all right let's talk about this man let's get to know this dude yeah. before we uh throw any uh curveballs at him pull out hop out made it look sexy all right so when i started hey. stand up <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I was, um, I, after improv, it was like, and before one, I was like looking for something else. I was also like older when I started, I was like 24 going on 25 older only cause like in New York or whatever, like people, people so much like pride themselves on starting like at yeah, 20 or yes. in, in their teens. It is like, you know, what are you talking about? You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not normal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, low key, low key, it should work the opposite though. Like low key, it should be a flex to be like, oh, I didn't start till I was thirty six. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. How you think here? Oh uh, man, I woke up one day, quit my accounting job, <laughs> yeah. uh, started doing stand up. I mean, what you? Oh, you've been doing this since thirteen. Wow, that's. I mean, that's good for you. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my friend, shout out my friend Shalewa Sharp. She's great. She started like in her thirties. She had like, I mean. It's nice when people have like a whole life and a whole story. But yeah, I was almost yeah. like when I was like 25 when I started stand up and um, it was like, uh, you know, um, a meet and greet for impro improvisers that wanted to do stand up and vice versa. So I met like black and mm -hmm. at, at this meet and greet and I was like, oh, I'm going to go hang out with y'all. They were like, oh, we want to do this. I was like, oh, I want to do that. This just started going to open mics. And I did stand up for like four years, you know, doing it like two, three times a night for years and years. And, wow. you know, just just really grinding and I don't know, like losing my mind, working at Walgreens, doing all kinds of goofy shit. You know what I'm saying? Dog walk. Yeah. I got fired for dog walking. This goofy, <laughs> ass, this goofy ass boy lady said I was like dragging the dog, which I was. I was dragging him, but, oh, but they told me to. But they told me to because he wouldn't walk. He was like, you know, a bulldog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like those, and he was really cute. So I'd be on the street, people would give him attention. And he'd be like leaning. You know how they don't really like. <laughs> And you could tell that it had already been a thing that it was messed up, like the leash, because it was it was already like weathered and it was like ripping mm. a little bit. And and I was like, you know, I was pointing and I was like, look, look. And it was like, nah, it was already like that. You're abusing <laughs> him. You're hurting him. You're hurting him. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, this is a uh, this is Amy Cooper's dog. Okay, <laughs> yeah, dog, right, right. dog used to this. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean, but it was they, then, but yeah, but still. So you were you you were a dog walker, and you got fired from being a dog walker, and you worked at Walgreens, and you did stand up. Yeah, not all at the same time, but oh, okay. um, dog walking. Yeah, I got super fired. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Your so, New York yeah, dogs a, different too. Yeah, like, they are. You can't, they, you can't treat mm, the New York dogs like they. Like they is do. people like we from the south so it's kind of different and. You know, walking around up there, because Roger just had a job up there. So walking around up there, people would, like, have their dogs in their arms, on the backpack. Like, dogs wouldn't even. I was like, oh, oh, that's different. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They different, dog. They Like, I wasn't even scared of dogs in New York. Mm -mm, like Me either. Here, I'd be scared yeah, of dogs. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, that might be a stray. <laughs> like, if you see a dog with no owner, it, like, here, it's like, oh, fuck, like, Cujo. You know what I'm saying? But up there, it's like. You see a dog with no owner, it's like, no, the, the owner's like up the block or something. Mm. Or I'll like make a whistle it to turn around. Or like you'll see people pick their dog up and like carry it places and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? They don't walk their dogs really. It's like they carry their dogs sometimes. It's, it's, it's a different breed up there. So I can see why they, they flipped out on you because they was like, that's not even a. That's a family member. Yeah, that's a baby. Yeah. <laughs> not even their dog. No, I mean, it wasn't even their dog. I think right. they were like, oh. Who is this random nigga with a dog? Like, you know what I mean? I know it's not his, you know? <laughs> someone, someone said that fat nigga would have been on a skateboard. 
<laughs> yeah, I wish I would have put him on a skateboard. Honestly, he wasn't even that fat. That's the thing. Like he was just like a puppy, and this. Right. Yeah, dog culture is terrible. But anyway, like yeah, I <laughs> did that for like four years, four and a half years, and then the the idea for the play is kind of what set in motion. I think a good amount of the the TV writing prospects, at least, because right. it was like that script ultimately became like a uh writing sample and opened up doors for me because and also the live component obviously brought some attention to it and at least brought it at least got me interviews i'll say right. it didn't get me like jobs per se it got me like interviews like so hidden fences kind of came out of the viral mistake that uh can't you know happened in 2017 mm -hmm. stage in 2017 and 2018 when you know, it was Bush twins and the mother goofy people called completed hidden figures and fences into hidden fences. And then I um I just called it hidden fences and I just had the the play idea. One day I just woke up and I was like, I'm gonna write the play hidden fences. I was like looking at what people were saying on Twitter and I was like, this feels like a more long form joke, you mm -hmm. know, in a play. So I just took them, combined them. I made a mashup play where Troy from Fences, and I played the Troy character, where Troy from Fences wants to be the first black man to hit a baseball in the space, and the hidden figures do the math to help get it there. And then like, I just, I staged it like several times, and it was like bussing. It was bussing. This shit yeah. was like, yeah, I had a one show that was like, actually the 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 livest, one of the livest shows I had, there was like 300 plus people at this spot, Little Field in Brooklyn, and uh, Kendrick's album, Damn, had just came out. Ah, yeah. And, man, that shit was busting. I was, I was mm. going crazy. And um, it was so fun. I like put a bunch of um, references in it, like as treating it as if it was like one thing, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? As if it was like, you know, so there's just like, you know, waiting to exhale quotes for no reason for a character. And then like, <laughs> like, yes! The fucking, uh, <laughs> and then like, uh, uh, Will Smith, uh, you know, uh, why don't he love me, man? Like, fresh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when um he's talking about his dad, but then I'd be like, also like back on the actual story. So I'd be like, right. also like, uh, random Ben Carson uh, character, you know, <laughs> uh, like playing his brother. It was like, <laughs> and then my friend Langston, um, he was the master of ceremonies. Also, everybody except for Troy worked for NASA since he was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> since he was like so jealous of his of his son, like in his energy, like everybody just came in and was like, you know, he's like, in the middle of a, um, so it opens up, he's in a dream sequence and it, and I just go, aha, the lights come up. And then it's like the hidden figures standing there and they're with a baseball and a string, much like the end sequence yeah. holding it. One is taking notes and the other <laughs> one is like holding it and I'm holding a bat and I'm like, aha, I'm gonna be the first nigga to hit a baseball in the space. <laughs> uh, and they're like, what? They're like Troy with with your baseball powers and, and our science, you might be the first nigga in baseball in the space. <laughs> like, like, I'm so happy y'all ladies uh helped me with this instead of getting the uh black man on the moon or some shit. And then, and then yeah. you realize I'm in a dream. You realize I'm in a dream. I wake up and my wife comes in. She's like, Troy, Troy, wake up. You're a garbage man and you gotta take out the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta out the neighbor's garbage, our garbage, and be like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Um, I was like, can I get something to eat? She's like, I was like, something, something, make me a sandwich. And she goes, boo boo, I work for NASA. You make me a sandwich. <laughs> and then I start making her a sandwich. I start making her a sandwich. And then every other family member comes in. And they're like, uh, they also work for NASA, and they just like further shit on them. It's so funny. And then um, my friend Langston, he so he used to do, he was the master of ceremonies. He used to do this thing. Um, my friend Langston Kerman, he like, he's so funny. He's like, oh yeah, he used to do um, these things online for several years called Black History Facts. 
So he'd mm-hmm. come out and he'd just be yelling at people and they'd be like, Black History Fact! Lurkreese <laughs> and BB King both stand for barbecue! That's <laughs> 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 barbecue, barbecue king! <laughs> Yeah, South Side of Bust Down. Yeah, he's the best. Oh, uh, man. Oh, man. But yeah, he'd be hosting that and he'd be, bring us back into the acts and the act break. I might like bring it back. I don't know. I feel like it yeah, was. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, like, how does that like how does that work? Because I feel like one that that idea is so funny and it's it's like I, it's still relevant. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, and uh, it sounded like when you first did it, you know, it was like, I'm doing this. It's on my own, kind of. I just want to, you know, do, and it gave you other opportunities. But now it's like you use those opportunities and you could probably do the shit again to get like, e- like refresh it or just do it, bring yeah. it back. Like now that y'all know who I am, now y'all really going to see how like some shit that's 100% me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wish I could. I, I want to refresh it. I think, I think a part of the difficulty is knowing like, uh, who, like, if I'm going to do it to get a run or like, you know, knowing people's availability and how, mm-hmm. how busy it, cause it was a large cast at one point, <laughs> it was like 10 people and I switched it around, moved it. But yeah, that got me like, like interviews at least or like interests, you know, into um, yeah. <clears throat> like my own writing. So at my first writing job, like 2017, the Showtime show and, you know, I, um, uh, I had like three interviews and a friend recommended me who also like produced that play for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my buddy Jermaine helped me out, Jermaine Fowler. And he, um, you know, he flew out the whole cast in 2018. I had like 10 different stagings of that. And then, yeah, I was wow. like by Coastal for a while. It was like 2017 job and I had two month gap. Then I did the color Urkel in 2017, also. Yeah, yeah. Tell everybody about the color Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> the 20, uh, no, wait, let me show y'all the posters. This is dope as shit. <laughs> let me show y'all. This. Let me show y'all. This. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those that listen to this audio later, yeah. it's it's just it's like a Jaleel White looking out the window. Yeah, yeah. It's the silhouette of Jaleel. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's about life. It's about love. It's about did I do that? <laughs> Ooh, that's good. How long does it take you to like write this these these plays? Like you know the whole thing. I I wrote uh, Hidden Fences like um in like two weeks and then i just like refreshed it every mm-hmm. every showing and made it like hyper topical so like mm-hmm. when y'all remember when that uh the asian guy got pulled off the plane yeah mm-hmm. yeah so uh somebody had the idea one of the friends of the cast members had an idea of um making that kind of a cold open so we were like we went out to one play and we were like <laughs> we were like, yo, this 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 play is actually too too crowded, y'all. Somebody gotta leave. And this guy, and he was the volunteer. We just picked him out randomly. He wasn't Asian, he was a white guy. Right. Right. <laughs> so we pulled him out and somebody grabbed him by his feet and right his <laughs> Oh shit. So we do shit like that. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so that's yeah. Amazing, but the, the color Urkel, I did I, it was kind of like an exercise in clowning. Like yeah. The pencils were so maximalist. I never wrote a play. I was just I was just goofing off with my friends. I was just having fun. Uh it, the color Urkel was kind of like I it was exercise in clowning where I, like I had so it was like Urkel and Stefan Urkel are separated through space and time, and they need to communicate to through the time machine, but they can only send letters. So they're mm-hmm. telling each other what life is like for Black people in each respective time period they are in, like mm-hmm. in the 70s or 80s, and then like, you know, 2055, respectively. And so, you know, I played both parts. I pl- I'd have on the suspenders and Urkel. I came out to the color purple music and I was running around as 
Stefan as as uh, Urkel, and I was like, Stefan, Stefan, wait up! And then I snap <laughs> out, and then I take off the suspenders and the glasses, and I be Stefan Urkel and be like, hurry up with your slow ass, and then I put it. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was like going back and forth. And then when I would do the, uh, the um, you know, there was one part where I was like acting like I was in the time machine, like, what? And I'd be like, where am I? I woke up with the letter and I was like reading off of that. And then I'd jump back and forth each time period and go back into flashbacks. And it was the whole thing. And, <laughs> and then I introduced the, um, uh, you know, uh, whatchamacall uh, character at one point. Uh, um, what's his name? The cop, man, why am I, what's wrong with me? Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, um, uh, Mr., uh, what the, Carl, Carl Winslow. Oh, Carl Winslow, yeah. yeah. Too many Urkels on your team, that's why you're Winslow. Winslow. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was fun. Oh, man, <laughs> that sounds awesome, man. How long did you run those for? Two years. Like, wow. I did them for two years. Uh, yeah, I miss it, I miss it. I mean, um. Uh, through quarantine and in just like 2019 and like working that's when i worked on both Maisel and atlanta respectively like in the same year and i was like that was like really busy and that was like right before quarantine that took me up to quarantine um working on both of those like 2019 i got um uh Maisel january 2019 and then <clears throat> in uh like August, September of that year, I moved back to LA mm -hmm. to work on Atlanta season three and four back to back. And that took me through like April. Okay. And, and I was just like, you know, quarantine kind of took, <clears throat> came from the place. I'm working on um like a my grandma show. It's like a one man show about my grandma called Sweet Lorraine. Oh so, man. She's my That's best good. friend. And she, she passed in September, <laughs> but I'm doing like a one man show kind of mixed <clears throat> kind of media a little bit where like i have like a one man show part and then i have like two to three one act plays that kind of encapsulate the kind of thing i'm talking about so it'd be like one man show one act one one man show or and one act one man show one act and then i'm like wearing her hat and stuff and you know oh, it's so just cute sweet. Yeah. What 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 was the moment in your career that you was like, oh wow, like I didn't expect to be here? Mm. <clears throat> Think when um, hmm. take your time, baby. Take your time. Yeah, no, no. I'm trying to think. That's just what black women. That's what the black women say in church when you're thinking. I'm just trying to. I'm just feeling <laughs> face. <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I'm trying to. I, f I feel like it's like. I guess when I met Donald. Um, mm. Donald Trump. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. I'm mm -hmm. fucking with you. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's the opposite moment, right? Yeah. He walked me downstairs. He was like, "Mexicans is rapists." He put his arm around me. I was, you know, no, was no. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but, uh, time out social time out <laughs> <laughs> you got put in time out um i think um yeah i do think it was i think it's when i actually had the interview when i got the call from donald that i got the job mm. i was on my i was uh getting ready to go to work which was Maisel at the time. So I got the call, I got the job, and then I went to my other job. So knowing a job was ending and having a job coming up was so mental to me. I think that, yeah. and then it didn't feel real until I was there. I felt like so intimidated. I felt like a real, uh, you know, I feel like especially for black writers, any creatives, anybody in Hollywood or just anything that black people could try to do is like, I felt, such wild imposter syndrome i didn't feel like i'm the man i didn't feel like you know um yeah i i i suffered for a while you know it wasn't mm -hmm. like as fun as the plays hanging out with my friends it wasn't i had to like you know quote unquote graduate like i had to i had to like push 
forward for these things and things I didn't know I could do because like, you know, it feels like with like, I guess like hard work or like any kind of opportunity, you never know how much more you can do until you like push outside of that. And it, right. it felt like, it felt like a little for, or at least how I felt, it felt like mm -hmm. something I could do, but that was a little for in the strength, in the sense of me trying to get stronger, a little bit out of my reach. Right. In terms of what I thought for myself, maybe that was me just playing it small, but it mm -hmm. felt a little bit outside of my own reach. Well, I was like, yeah, no, I think a lot of people can identify with that. I definitely can uh, I did relate to that. Um, and it's so interesting because if, if, if someone were to tell you your resume for another person, you probably wouldn't feel that, right? If someone's like, yo, this motherfucker heard a faux pas on TV, constructed a play for two years, did this fucking play, out, you know what I'm saying, out of nowhere, boom, did this other thing, got this job from Miss Maisel, boom. It was like, yeah, of course that nigga's going to be writing for Atlanta. Like, that's that's a career trajectory. But when it's, it's something about when it's you, it's like, yeah, but I don't know. Is, am I doing too much? <laughs> <laughs> like, who the fuck, who I think I am up in here? But yeah. now nah, that's beautiful. Did you, when you were in that writer's room, though, once you, like, kind of got in there did that feeling ever go away where you're like okay cool i belong here i'm with my peers or is it one of those things where you still struggle with it today um <clears throat> i don't struggle with it as much i think <clears throat> i struggled with it especially for that show because i wasn't on the previous shows and it was so mental to me because i went from being in the in the space that atlanta was on the air and then was trying to come back. I went from being a fan sitting on my, the couch with my roommate with a bunch of cat hair on it to watching, <laughs> to watching, to, to writing the damn show. Right. The, yeah, someone said full circle moment. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly how I felt. It was so surreal. And it was like, also like, I, I had a couple little run-ins with Lakeith and Donald before, just in passing. I saw Lakeith, uh, I was like going to Nas' birthday party after I met one of his producers um, who uh, like, we, we were like chopping it up. He invited me to Nas' birthday and I, you know, I'm from a project over from Queensbridge and he, you know, we, he introduced me to Nas, but I was like on the way like up to this party in Massaville and then he was uh, he was walking down and he just assumed you know I'm somebody I'm going up to this party we we have a moment chopping it up I was just gone for like one summer my roommate turns to me he's just like you're gone for one summer man who are you man <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like you know other people getting checked you know I'm getting yeah. go, go straight up I remember you man <laughs> 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 yes. yes. Excuse me, pause. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's how I feel when I use the uh, AMC Premier Stubs Pass. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all just waiting on y'all popcorn. <laughs> that's cute. Couldn't be me. Uh, <laughs> but um, can you watch it the same now that you're on the other side of it? Like, is it you know, is it surreal? Because I know being a fan, at least to me, one of the big things about Atlanta was like. It being this tentpole black show, everyone got an opinion. Everyone's critiquing it. Everyone, you know, everyone's triggered by everything that's on it now, you know. And then now you're on the other side, seeing how the sausage is made. Like, how does it? Like, does it change how you how you view the show now? Mm, yeah, I mean, I still went into the show as a fan for sure, mm. but it was crazy to see the process of it. I feel like a little bit of the DNA of Hidden Fences was directly pulled from like watching Atlanta and seeing how the, they went into that process. Some parts of it was similar, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's like remixing certain viral moments or reimagining them to be, you know, something entirely fresh, using them towards a narrative or something, I mean. Right, you know, not as not as dark as uh three slaps, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did your family and friends respond to 
you being like on all these shows in Atlanta. Like, I know they had to have some type of response. Like, how did they respond? Was it positive? Was it negative? Was it like mm. cheering for you? My mom is um, such a wonderful person to talk about TV, art, anything with. She She's put me on to so much stuff. You know, when she is like 61, 62, she got um, a master's in applied theater. And I feel like wow. so much of that, but you know, the, it's funny when people get their degree, that's the potential turned into realized energy of like, wow, that person got that. But yeah. that potential energy by virtue of her being able to complete that was always in her. Some people... Yep get it in degrees some people have the degree in them she's like right. it's, it's in me not on me you know what i'm saying come, on, <laughs> like, come, through, come through now don't talk like that boy <laughs> <laughs> don't get the preaching on a sunday <laughs> <laughs> but it's true though it is true like a lot of stuff even um the job right even the job is still a recognition of shit you had in you you right. know what i mean like it's like uh uh, like w when I got, um, got my job with game theory, it was one of those things where it was like, I, w I was excited, but I always thought I could do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it was just one of those things. I was like, I don't know if I want to do something like that. Or like writing for TV. I kind of like podcasting. Like, this is dope. We making a living doing this shit. This, this is a dream of its own. And it was, but it was so weird talking to other people because they was like, nigga, you got to do this. Okay, you need to do this. Shit. Do you know what it's going to mean to have this on your resume? I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that's the recognition of the achievement is like, oh, you yes. really could do it. You just, before you just was a nigga that thought you could do it. But yes. now it's a nigga that we know can do it. You know what I mean? I think that that does matter to people. But yeah, degrees are very much the same. Like, you, you could have actually literally learned this on your own. You might have already known this shit, but it's somebody right. putting that degree on you before everybody goes, bam. And then, of course, the second thing is black women be learning. Don't black women be learning. God they damn. Learning. My mom was one of them people that every time I look up, she, she got, got a new, new career, degree. new degree. Yeah, like, she done changed like feels like umpteen times. She was like, you know, and, and it's amazing talking to her because she's one of the few people who constantly looks in the future. So she's like, well, I know I'm getting, you know, I'm getting ready to get to retirement age. So, you know, I'm already planning about what I want to do, you know, when, when I'm retirement age. It's almost like when you ask a kid, what do you want to do when you grow up? And they got a list of five things. That's how she is at her age. What do you want to do when you get old? She's like, I got a list of five things. I don't know which one I'm going to pick, but one of these things I'm going to accomplish. And now she's just a person that can do all that shit. Yes. Well, it's like, oh, yeah, you need somebody to, to do your hair. Just come on down to the crib. I'll do your hair. <laughs> and then we could talk about this medical finance and shit. And you're just like, what? What? What is happening? <laughs> How do we get master's here? degree right next to the beauty school diploma. Is that yes, for hanging real? On the wall. Yes, hanging on the wall. Yes. All types of all types of certificates. Yeah. yeah, like teaching you some African American history shit. You just like I just came to get my hair braided, but thank mm -hmm. you. You know, slight slight pivot. I don't I don't um know if y'all seen. It. Oh, maybe y'all seen it. But without oh. spoiling, do y'all like the new Obi Wan? Yeah, yes. I do like it. Yeah, I didn't see yeah, it. I didn't see it yet. I didn't see it yet. Yeah, yeah, but I love, I love it. it. Yeah, Damn. yeah, it's. I, I think low, low key is better than. Uh, I, it's only been two episodes, so I don't want to be a hype beast. So let me take it down a little notch. But uh, I think I think it might be better than Mando. Oh, be Mando. okay, okay, that's, Mando, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, okay, bro. I'm into this it. Joint, okay. This joint feel like one of them joints where like. Uh, and this happens in TV. This happened with uh, them CW shows. I'm, I, I'm not saying they're good, but this is what happened. They somebody wanted to make a Batman show, and they was like, "No, nah, nigga, uh, you can go make the Flash, and we'll see if that works." That like that's how Mando feel with this Obi Wan. Like they wanted to make Obi Wan the whole time, right? And they was like, "Let's try this other shit." Oh, it worked. All right, try this one. Okay, you know what? Let's go. You can do Obi Wan. So I won't spoil anything, but yeah, I love that shit though. Um. Mm -hmm. So also, man, like, uh, what is what is it like now writing for the show and seeing, do y'all even see the critical reception? Do y'all think about, do you talk about this? Is this something you even look at? Do you just write the shit and be like, man, fuck them niggas. I don't care what they got to say. Like, how, <laughs> how does that work? I was off Twitter for like two years and, and I don't have Instagram right now. I just got back on 
Twitter to get some love from my episodes and to kind of promote my stuff. And I tweet, I tweet a, a bit. I'm between, there's some tweets in there. But you know, like, I, <laughs> um, it's, it's weird because I'm like, yeah, I'm just like, at the point I feel like there's worms getting in my brain. I try to get off it, but some things are interesting. People seem to like Trini to the bone. It's, but it's a little polarizing at times. But some people are like, it's the best one. It's the worst one. I don't know what to, you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't know what to think. But um, yeah, I, I low key, I low key love this season because um, I was reading something. Uh, I think it was a, one of the Stephen Glover interviews, and but one of the things he said was it's kind of like American Dad, like each episode is like almost like a capsule that can reset and mm -hmm. then you can watch you can watch episode six and not watch seven and eight and still get the gist of it right mm -hmm. and there's something that's so dope about that um and as a person that watches like american dad about mm -hmm. like five nights a week <laughs> i was like <laughs> i said oh no wonder i like this shit it do kind of feel like you know almost like a like a, a encapsulated thing um and then i like i love the anthology episodes um the, I think the most thing I like about Atlanta is that it's never what I expect. It's always right. something different. I don't like. I think I want the same thing. People believe they want the same shit over and over, but if you look at the shows that give you the same shit, everyone ends up hating them so quick. It, it'd be like they did this nigga selling drugs again. Like, well, that's what the power. That's, that's what they what? do on power. They sell drugs. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. <laughs> but by yeah. season five, like, oh, let me guess, he gonna sell some drugs. I'm like, all right, <laughs> so y'all don't really want the same shit. So yeah. it's kind of hard to be on the other side of that, making the creative decision because you have to kind of anticipate the audience needs and wants before they even know what they want. Um, and I feel like that's how this season has been, where it's like, uh, at least to me, it was like so different. You could be like. I don't know what I'm looking forward to next week. You know what I mean? Like, here's the preview. I wonder what that's really going to be about. And then you mm -hmm. show up. Um, and so, I, like I said, I've been enjoying enjoying it. Uh, and, yeah, Trinity to the Bone was was a beast. Um, was, was it, like, was it purposeful to have the horror vibes throughout the season? Or was it just y'all are some just cynical, bitter, broken people? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... <clears throat> First, one of the first things, one of the first days in the writer's room, one of the things Donald said is like, very explicitly, this season is about white people. And this season specifically about white people is the curse of racism, cursing them, which is, you know, what three slaps the beginning is. And is kind of, if you see, seen the whole season is something that's kind of touched on with the white Ernest, Ernest, mm -hmm. whatever, like a uh, character who's like, in the um, big payback episode, you see him again, like in real life, which is the horror of it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> kind of giving the same spiel, but instead to a white man, right? Mm -hmm. And then you see him, and then he kills himself, right? Which is like proof of basically what he's saying is, and kind of what he was saying in the, in the, in the nightmares that kind of like he knows too much, you know? Yeah. He's he's giving into the curse. Like the curse is kind of taking him on. And then you see him at in the tag in the season finale. So we linked a lot of those things in. And you know, I was I need to go back and watch the season finale. A lot of things changed from the script. I mean it's a good amount of time in between. Right, right. Like um there's like I I almost saw it as like um the the things in the book bag, I thought it was like a purposeful thing of like, these were artifacts from each of the step outs. Mm. You know I mean? Like if it was like, for some reason, slight pepper mango, like he took out of the oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. And, then, and then like, um, like a, a, remember he stole that little thing unintentionally in Big Payback, if it was like a little cookie thing like that. Yeah. I thought that's what it was. But then, you know, it was the family picture. So right. like, yeah, we just came in like thinking about the the curse and trying to like, I guess, write about, right to that. I, I think for people who didn't like the anthology and wanted more of the ones with gang, you know, it's, yeah. it's two different uh, short seasons of a show in, in one. So you can go back and 
you can watch the ones just with the gang, and then you can just right. watch the ones anthology, depending on what's for you, you know? Yeah, I think the creative freedom is what I was digging, and um, it felt like not just a commentary on, like, white people and white racism and whiteness. It felt like a commentary on a specific type of, like, liberal white person. You know what I mean? Like, like quote, unquote, kind of the good white people. Like, I think it's easy for people to do the, like, redneck, you know, saying, like, I hate niggers, uh, MAGA, make them, like, that's the, the, the demagogue, right? That's the person that doesn't really exist in a lot of people's lives in that way. Yeah. But, like, we know a Marshall. We know, you know what I'm saying? You, like, that family with the, with the black, with the Trinidadian nurse, like, we know those families, you know what I'm saying? And it was in these, a lot of these kind of more subtle ways that it hit. And I, and I, I thought that was, uh, that was a dope choice, you know, as opposed mm -hmm. to just, you know, a time to kill. Cause I feel like that's been done so much that it's almost like a white person could look at that and be like, oh, that has nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not like those whites, but I'm not like, that extreme. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like, when you do right. go to Starbucks and ignore the brother in line in front of you and you do, you know what I'm saying? You do, uh, 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 you would hire the nanny to watch your kid and like you do that shit. Like that's, that's some white people shit that don't seem that fucked up, you know? But once you think about it, it's like, Oh yeah, this shit touches all of us. Um, and, and even like, uh, so, all right. So that's your episode. How does that work? Like you write it from rooted to the tutor, the, the, you're, are you the head writer for that episode? Like how's that situation work in the room? Kind of. Oh, and thank you. Thank you for the, uh, yeah, this is a uh, mint. You know what I'm saying? Someone said that polish pops. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Man. We seen the polish. Yeah. We seen the flex. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. I mean, we broke it as a room when we, uh, you know, they, they came in with stories like Donald had a specific thing for this one. Mm -hmm. And, um, like we were kind of, playing around with it and then like I found the Trini to the bone song I think and then we kind of like jumped off from there but there was a specific story about a Trinidadian nanny and different things and is you know there's some dialogue it's just like going through the outline like this this is directly fitting into the story like this line doesn't change like are you gonna write this in and then kind of building around there and you know um yeah it was like to a certain point collaborative but then you know i um and outside of the sister the trinidadian sister they got on set who was um you know a, a cultural liaison and like a mm -hmm. consultant i asked a friend of mine's uncle who's trini and you know i was talking to him i got the slight pepper joke of, then you know you know me hard you know yeah yes there, where i was like you know i like looked that stuff up and okay. then other things there were just like sayings and things and just trying to make it feel as like lived in as possible but is there a competitive nature to it like with these some of these episodes being like yo this is mine i the, is it like i'm trying to have the best one of the season you know what i'm saying like when they look at the emmy reel they need to be looking at my shit because i'm fitting to kill this like is that is it that going into it or is it still kind of that almost the imposter syndrome thing of like man i just don't want to have a whack episode i don't want nobody to be like his shit was whack the rest of the shit was hot you know like what's your mentality going into it i think if each episode kind of builds to making the show more singular and people remembering why they missed it. I think the competitiveness because of how specific and I think once in a generation special, the show is, it makes it competitive toward to push. It makes it competitive in the sense of pushing the idea of competition out because we're really in just competition with ourselves at some point. That would make it seem like only we can be competitive with other seasons of Atlanta. So right. you know, I think that's how it feels. And I think that, um, you know, Donald saying only, you know, uh, uh, Sopranos can touch us is like bold and something that's mm -hmm. just like, yeah, kind of, you know, talk your shit. 
I, you yeah. know, I, I, I loved um, my episode for talking about parts of the diaspora, you know, that are really rarely touched upon. I thought, I thought mine was a, was a standout in the sense of not only when do we ever see that, but, you know, reparations and, um, uh, you know, was the, was the other step out? Um, uh, yeah, reparations, uh, for the big payback you had, uh, okay. Trinity to the bone. Uh, what else am I missing? Oh, three, three slaps is kind of a step out. Cause yeah, uh, that was a step out. But yeah, I feel like there are different things that were like uh, either touched down, touched on, or reimagining mm -hmm. that this one kind of hit in a different sense, um, at least emotionally. You know, I think that um, the the competition lies in you know one of the things Donald too said, uh, like first day he also wrote on the board is like do what others can't. Mm -hmm. And no one else, no, regardless of how they feel about the season, could do right. what we did in these in these last two seasons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Rich Wigger, Prill Wigger. That was the other step Rich out. Rich Wigger, Paul Wigger. Uh, yeah. I love that one too, though. That, that that's my shit too. Um, I, I named that episode too. I was like, oh, for real? <laughs> <laughs> like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. No. No. It was like. Uh, the Jay Z line, rich nigga, oh, broke, nigga, broke, well, nigga. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was oh, just yeah. rapping it. I was like, yeah. nigga, Paul Wigger, still nigga, still Wigger, still Wigger. <laughs> and this nigga Donald was like, yeah, we go, we go. <laughs> it is. It does. It do feel good when uh, you throw out an idea and like somebody you think is dope is like, yeah. That, that works. You know what I mean? Because this is like a, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm pretty dope, right? Right? Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. It's funny, too, when people are watching it and they know your sense of humor or your sensibility and they're like, did you do that part? Did you do that part? Yes. Most of the time, they be wrong. But right, right. Uh, at least for the um, three slaps episode, when they actually go down into Lake Lanier and you see and it pops up that that's where they are, they're driving yeah. tour tours that I did pitch that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, um, uh, that happens with with our show too. And sometimes they're wrong, sometimes they're right. Do you have like a? Uh, I have a MacGuffin. I have a thing that I want to get into the show. I don't think it's, it's never gonna happen. It might but one day. I'm trying to get some sort of reference to Pootie Tang in the show, and so far I've gotten close. Like I've got, like I've gotten to like the last day before when they make it cuts and they be like, nah, I don't know if enough people understand this joke. And I'm like, fuck, but one, one day, <laughs> one day you're going to break. Through. I'm going to get some pootie tang in there. Do you have anything like, like that? Day. <laughs> mm, I'm trying to think. Mm, I got a Jada kiss, uh, a, uh, reference in the season finale of Abbott. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. yes. That's yes. so man. Let's talk about Abbott too. I also like, got my about... name. In, I also got my name in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how'd you and how'd you get your name in there? Well, with well, Tariq, he was like, he's going to talk about going to New York. He's like, who's the think that me, Tariq Temple? <laughs> 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 That's so dope, man. Yeah. Um, yo, you know it's crazy. Um, like I think of Star Wars shit as like this highfalutin art, you know what I'm saying? So it's like Disney Plus got the budget, they got the you know, motherfuckers bring like the symphony in to play the music and shit. Like it's really <laughs> just elevated shit. And then uh I watch these YouTube breakdowns of the show sometimes for uh I think New Rock Stars does it. Mm -hmm. And they be mad shit in there where it's just like, oh yeah, on this background, that's that that's the producer's wife's name. Or something yes. where like, mm -hmm. yo, everyone is doing everyone is trying to get something in there. It, even if it's fucking Star Wars, it's, it's like, oh yeah, this character's name is like this dude's son, but the name is backwards. Like, mm -hmm. fuck, man, that is so crazy. Um, so what was it like with Abbott, man? Um, because I mean <laughs> Abbott is the undeniable hit, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I I mean, as much as like I I, I love Atlanta. 
it's controversial though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You gotta fucking have a discussion and shit. Is you know <laughs> you gotta put your thinking cap on. Yeah, every episode has gotta be somebody you gotta you gotta navigate through the like this nigga didn't like this. The think pieces come out. But I feel like yeah. Abbott's the only joint right now that it don't matter wh- where you're from, wh- everyone seen to love Abbott, like period. Yeah. Like uh so much they think it in school shootings. Like they 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 are that's how much they love this shit. Like what's it like? <laughs> what's it like? in that environment oh side note uh you know i heard if you slow down the the ewoks language the yeah. blah, 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 you slow it down it's tippy tow tippy tow on the pity stain well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um no nah, but um it's pretty good um I, I I love the show, you know. I I just love that there's just like all these black kids like just being able to be themselves and people I don't know, it just feels like a nice little pocket of just black people just being able to do, you know, it, it's not like a utopia. It feels very it's just very grounded. Yeah. Very and grounded. it's not um it's fun, it's funny, but it's not like message. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's, I mean, it doesn't mean that there's nothing to be learned there, but it doesn't feel like the goal is like the lesson of the week. You know what I'm saying? Which mm. can kind of happen with black shit sometimes because people always feel like niggas need to learn something from everything. I still like watch. chosen horsing. I still like chosen chosen horsing my shit in there. Like, you yeah. know, I don't know if y'all remember the new tech episode when they had to. Yeah. Re- it when they had to recall the tablets they were yes. like saying that that was a it was it was uh they were using it to uh track the the test scores because it was like yes. from the school of prison pipeline i pitched yeah. that yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. and, I, and that's so that's what i'm saying like i love it because it's there but it's not there's a level where like that comes before even being funny right like right. when you watch something you like this i mean Thank you. you, know, it's, like, you know, it's like it's like uh where with whatever you watch we use when I watch Insecure and uh niggas start arguing about like shit condoms be on the show and you just like I mean sure but also like why why you, like you grow like, adult what? no kid should be watching this like what else do you watch with that mentality like right. have you ever watched the episode of Sex in the City and been like these people need to use some condoms or is it just oh I seen some black people on the screen. Black people need to learn about condoms because you know they don't know. <laughs> like, where did that come from? So I, I think with uh Abbott, it's just so funny and so good, and the performance is so good that it's yeah. it's really like um it, it's entertaining as much as it can, like, you know, you can you can take something from it, you know what I mean? So I think that's dope. Is the um so which environment? Like, are there because you've been in three different writers' rooms, like what are the differences in the environment, like with collaboration, with uh, competition, all that I've been, stuff? I've been in more than three, but these are the only real three I've liked. And I think Abbott oh. has been the healthiest and best for me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The one I only, I actually feel like I have some respect. In <laughs> Coming in last year as a producer, this year as a supervising producer and, and being around like, you know, black creatives and, and people who are, just want to make, this show good use every piece of their experience to kind of really elevate what the show could be and Quinta having her ultimate vision and you know being such a grounded like gifted person I I, I think okay. that um you know you, you only want to see fit that you as a general to you know you know do uh, uh you know and uh, achieve those that mission for for this person you work for, you know, I take right. I take pride in that. Where other times I'd be like, oh, whatever. I mean, not like I didn't before, but like I'm just trying to remember in a healthy way, healthy right. detachment kind of way that you know it's not my show, and in that right. I can service this person who I want to succeed and are mm-hmm. you know already liked and you know right. especially working for black people and uh, specifically a black woman and being like. You know, I I want to get the job done for you because I, I I think it's important for Black people to learn how to work together, and yeah, you can see that the show was uh, 
stay with a lot of uh, a lot of love i think in, yeah in you can level. a lot of love and care yeah yeah, yeah and I, I know like with us having a sports show that's definitely something that because you know sports everybody got an opinion you know what i mean like you say something in a room of 20 people not everyone's gonna agree so you know bo comes in with a premise and it could be like hey um lebron james getting too old for all this shit and it's somebody in the room like nigga i'm a lakers fan i don't think he getting too old at all we need to run this back you know <laughs> but when it's time to write the jokes or write that point of view like to me i look at it as you say it's like that's your general you got to go write the best version of that argument or that you know what i'm saying whatever or that sketch or whatever we're working on that week the best version of that is what it's about because if you let your ego get too much it's gonna i think it's gonna make your work whack you know what I'm mean? like like at the end of the day it's still a job you know what i mean i think you know we've i've seen that before where like somebody try to slide something by like i kind of disagree with this let me write less than what your opinion is and it's like you're going to end up rewriting that shit because ain't nobody dumb you know what i mean so i i definitely feel you on uh want to execute and and especially you know like and people told me this when i got it, it was like hey man this is like a black late night sports show this is a lot of people dream job mm -hmm. don't you know what i'm saying like don't fuck it off trying to be like nah nigga that's just the rod show you know what i mean you gotta you gotta fucking do the job wait what show rob what show? it's a uh, game theory with uh oh, Romani Jones on HBO. oh yeah, yeah oh do you so, work with, uh morgan she wrote yeah yeah movie. yeah yeah morgan murphy yep mm -hmm. yep dope mm -hmm. um uh she uh uh she's she's so cool man she knows all yeah. the stuff about yeah. sports and fun and she gave me an abbott elementary mug so she gonna nice. forever be a fave you know yeah there can't nobody get there but i was like where'd you get that mug she worked on a lot of shit and uh, i'll just be talking to her because she you know i was talking to everybody i was trying to learn as much as i could mm -hmm. and so i would just be talking to her she just dropped like some some random shit that i think I would have on a t-shirt you know what i mean yes oh! at the elementary gang gang you know what i'm saying <laughs> we out here oh miss mazel okay i like okay. that yes and, and nails to match let oh oh, oh, oh that's oh, what i'm talking about oh, janelle, got, janelle got me this mug yeah <laughs> <laughs> we love us some janelle <laughs> Is that Photoshop? What is no, it's it's a picture of me like grilling and I'm like in this pose. You got it. <laughs> That's funny as hell, man. Oh man, what's it like working with Janelle, man? Because I mean, oh, we've known Janelle best. for a long oh, time. I love Janelle. I've known her for like eight years. I saw her when yeah. I was first starting stand up, and uh, I was we had she was on the showcase, and. Um, I was just like an instant fan and she I was like man I was like just starting stand up I was like 25 mm -hmm. I was like wow you're so funny where are you from what do you do she was just like she was like I'm a road comic we outside she was like I'm a road comic and she stared into the traffic in the distance and I was like <laughs> I was like man me and this nigga gonna be friends yeah. <laughs> right. you're so cool <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. Nah, it's it's been dope to watch her star rise too, man. And that was one of the things about Quinta that I was like, she got knowledge beyond her years because I think it had it has to be tempting to most people to like give themselves the Ava role because it's such a like over the top role that everyone's gonna love that character. But Janelle being Ava, oh, she embodies it. Yeah, it's it's so crazy. It's like that role was written for her. It's so crazy because I remember watching Dick Detectives. Yes, Dick Detectives. <laughs> oh. YouTube series. Yes. Oh, and being like, is so fucking funny. I love yeah. it. I was like, you're gonna be a star, yo. And I then walk, uh walk it was like I was like this person is a fucking star and then like seeing that uh come to fruition man uh you know I still I'm like I do uh worry like damn man she's got so famous I really don't think she could just go places no more like no, I no. see her in memes I, now I, I you know yeah I mean? you do, you know you're somebody they start making memes no nah, I've been with her I've seen it I've seen yeah it. like wow. yeah yeah how she all right you know what i'm saying like yeah. like she like five years from like probably having to slap somebody you know what i'm saying we'll understand <laughs> like it's, like they got a little too close got a little too close you gotta slap somebody every once in a while um but yeah I so mean, it, it, it just it boggles the mind how many people i, I managed not to slap 
every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is a little over the top, but you know what I'm saying? My that's the thing you don't get credit for. Like when you make the news for slapping that one person, they don't ever talk about the hundreds of people you didn't slap. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Point. Like when Mike Tyson beat that dude up on the plane, that can't be the first nigga to ever fuck with Mike Tyson. Mm -mm. No. You know what I'm saying? That he might have had incredible restraint for all we know. And then he finally just was like, I got I have to do this about once every 10 years and blah 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 blah. You know? Yeah, there's there's <laughs> a nigga in Brooklyn right now with a with a broken orbital bone who's like, man, this nigga <laughs> It was like, this nigga beat my ass in the 90s. Damn. He <laughs> oh, so because I ain't have cell phones, I ain't, I, I can't get no motherfucking, <laughs> I can't get a viral moment. <laughs> yeah. That's how it's fucked up how our society is because it's like, you get your ass with it's like, he, at least he went viral though. You know, <laughs> that shit had a thousand retweets. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so um, with the with the average room, that's dope. Now, what is, you don't have to name names, but what's a bad writer's room experience? What's that like? Um, I don't, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't want to take you back that far. I mean, I'll just say that when, especially you're working with Black people, I won't name it specifically, but I'll just say specifically when you are on bad shows, that's sometimes when you meet the most talent. Mm. Like I was on a bad show where, you know, if I told you the people who were associated with it, uh, you know, including myself, it's just like so wild what those people went on to do. And I right. think that's more important realizing the talent that kind of, you know, was going to succeed regardless of someone trying to mute you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like and I think that, you know, weirdly, not even trauma bonding, but the bonding that comes from seeing other talented people in the right. face of someone trying to kind of mute your own your own star i think right. is you know powerful and you know more important than like citing what it was specifically i think it's um just speaks to people's resilience and knowing that you know the cream you know rises to the top even though there's also know, like there's power. coffee black you know what i'm saying <laughs> there's also power and knowledge and learning what you don't want what you ain't gonna do again uh, that right. kind of shit. you know what, what i mean you ain't gonna do <laughs> yes, yes, because then you have standards. You be like, you know what? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deal with this. And it's I'm out. <laughs> yeah, and you can also see trouble coming. Yeah, if that makes sense. And yeah, and just in jobs in general, if you've had enough experience, because I've been at working environments where all of a sudden you'll see people up, start abandoning ship, and I tell people, I say, oh, something coming down. They was like, well, I was like, don't you see them people up top, top jumping ship? Whatever that is, it's getting ready to trickle on down. Yeah. yeah. No, that's valid. That's valid, Karen. I'm glad you said that because people like it, the standards, standards, uh, you know, go hand in hand with the boundaries and you got to know yes. what you're not going to accept and what people you're going to let in. And, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, that's a real, that's a real thing. That's important. I think especially for black people, because we think mm. we need to like go out of our way and we need to do extra credit and no one's yes. gonna let us in and one person at a time and all this other shit. And so we overstep or used to people stepping over us, you know, mm -hmm. to a certain point, we don't understand what some boundaries are. We think, we think there's a lot of black people who think overstepping boundaries is love. Yes. yes. Oh, that's yeah, a bar. Yeah. That's a bar. Yeah, right a lot, yeah, a lot of people don't understand it. And me personally, and I think you can only get that through experience. And what I realize is that you have to know yourself. And when you don't have boundaries, it is an emotional roller coaster because people don't know the boundaries that you haven't set yet. But you don't know the boundaries until they cross the boundaries. So, 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 it's, so it's like a, I won't say a cat and mouse game. It's like you're learning yourself while other people are learning you. And then once you set them boundaries, it's healthier for you. Yeah. Oh, for sure. There was things this year where it was like, uh, I'd see somebody else say no to something. I'll be like, we can say no to that. Like, 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> like it was, uh, like there was this thing where they were going to do a sketch <clears throat> and for part of the sketch, they wanted to like pan over to people to like black people 
sitting down eating like lobster drinking champagne uh, but you were gonna be out in the street you know and it's just like a funny cutaway so the kind of thing that's like a one second joke but could also be cut you'd be out there for no reason oh um, <laughs> <laughs> but they was like yo if anybody want to come out here eat this lobster da, 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 i was thinking maybe you could do it and i was like um let me think about it and i'll talk to my man he was like yeah i'm not doing that shit i was like oh we could just say we don't do that shit he's like yeah i was like Oh yeah, I'm not doing it either. I don't want to do that shit. <laughs> so, so, it's like, hey, yeah, I don't feel like doing it. And I'm like, oh yeah, cool, no problem. But up until that point, I didn't even know. Right. Like I is is because it's nebulous a little bit. It's not the same as like an office where mm -hmm. it's like you take your break at three fifteen. Like it's not that kind of shit. So it's like, and sometimes it is some cool shit that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? We like, yeah, I want to be in the background of this. That's cool. But mm -hmm. it never crossed my mind. You could be like, yeah, they asked me, I ain't feel like doing it. Find somebody else and like i had to i learned that from being cool with other people that was yeah. willing to be like yeah you don't gotta do all that shit yeah uh, yeah it's valid. sometimes black people will be like but how are you gonna know your own boundaries if i don't invade your personal space <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you know what the, and, and what's jacked up you go okay cool lesson learned and once you start setting them boundaries it's just for my personal life people don't like them boundaries mm -hmm. Particularly those people that push those boundaries, and then if it, it's it's not a problem, but it's one of those things. I said what I said, and you have to kind of and, and then guess what? You do that stay off where y'all looking at each other and everybody blinking their eyes because you like, uh, no, we're not gonna do this. Yeah, mm -hmm. just tell them count me out, like Kendrick said. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> move on without me. This is a very Kendrick Lamar heavy episode, ain't it though? <laughs> um, you so you fuck with Kendrick, man? You listen to the new Kendrick? yeah yeah i had to i had to i had to get into it i it had been a minute but i there's sometimes when i'm listening to kendrick where i'm like you know this is the black man's fiance you know what i'm saying like <laughs> <laughs> except he writes his own bars and he, you know he's literate he didn't he, he didn't oh, no. come out the learning annex you know what i'm saying oh no, <laughs> oh, no. It don't oh, no. Matter. I still love Beyonce. I know, I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know Jordan Temple. Everybody <laughs> knows she Beyonce can read. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can hear the bees right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, Candyman is bad. Um, <laughs> but uh, what's it called? Yeah. No, I, I like the album. There's some things that you know. I realized that it's like him working through different things trauma to mm -hmm. get to, to the point where he can like really healthily lay you know yeah. uh raise his family whatever but there's there's some moments when i uh, on second and third listen where it starts to use this lose his listenability or mm -hmm. replay value where i'm like you know it's that meme where somebody's like no one you know mm -hmm. what i mean you know it's mm -hmm. like no one colon it's like, it's like it's like this or like no one uh, Kendrick Lamar. The first time I fucked a white bitch. <laughs> <laughs> why? 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 Kendrick, why? Who's why you put this? me in this? He's in that first phase. He's in that first phase of uh. What was this for? <laughs> yes. He's in that first phase of black therapy. That uh, where it's like you all think right. you need to tell everybody what you're doing in therapy. Uh, we've all seen everyone with social media go through this. <laughs> it's just like. All right, cool. That sounds like a thing between you, your therapist, and your mom. But uh, congratulations. Uh, um, Keep working on that. Yeah, he's also like not. This is the first time it seemed like he's not sharing shit from a moral authority, which is interesting. Like this many albums in, and he's finally like, actually, y'all, I don't know. <laughs> like I don't like, got all the answers. Like normally it's the opposite. Where niggas like the more motherfucker get older, you know, old black man, the more they get older by the end, it's just like, and you niggas is the real problem. If you think about it, like <laughs> his old album is like, man, I, I don't know. Leave me alone. I'm listen, I'm yeah. doing this album because it's my last studio album and I'm obligated. <laughs> nah, yeah, not, I, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna hold you though. I, I loved it. I mean, i so much of it I replayed. <clears throat> I, I I could hear that it was a a therapy session i think also and also i like what you said of it by virtue of it being like the first therapy session because mm -hmm. you can hear like you know he's not only new to it but he's remembering all the things in his life parts of his life where he probably could have used that shit. so that's yeah. what he's also bringing up while he's talking about it and not trying to also i think especially for black men use your woman as your therapist 
Yes. Your, woman, your woman is not your therapist. She's not your, mm -hmm. your, your punching bag. She doesn't, she's not another. She doesn't have to, you know what I'm saying? And, yes. you know, know that that's a separate thing. The father mm -hmm. time, I think, was the first part of the first act break and realization of that. But yeah. being like, he's also speaking for a generation, you know what I'm saying? I needed that father, I needed that father time song. It like, was so good. More than I, I haven't spoken to my father in months and the nigga, mm -hmm. you know, never loved me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I had to realize that even from reading like bell hooks, like during, I mean, <laughs> we had a lot of time during quarantine. I wasn't saying yeah, I, was no, 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 I love it. I, love I wasn't, saying I wasn't it. reading yeah. bell hooks before, but I was reading her more with quarantine. Right. Mm -hmm. I read two books at once from Bugs, all about love again, and then um, we real cool. And it was just like talking about how like love and abuse can't exist in the same space. People, black people, mm -hmm. could talk, go about this all day, and it just it just yeah. ain't real. You know what I'm saying? You just can't mm -hmm. have both. And she had to come to that realization, and then that made me kind of, you know, realize that at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. I think, uh, and I, you know, I. It's uh, I just look at his him as something that's like like a generational kind of uh, talent that's able to surmise the the thoughts and feelings and emotions of like black men like my age. You know, we're we're yeah, about yeah. The same age. He's also a Gemini. You know, mm -hmm. so you know, I have, this, I have the same birthday as Kanye. Uh, oh wow! Been, okay, okay, <laughs> learn a lot. And I've been telling a lot less people that lately. Yeah. <laughs> and, what and, changed? What changed? <laughs> and, I, yeah. and I don't blame you. And uh, when you was talking about love and abuse, particularly for a lot of people, love and abuse is normal. So mm -hmm. it and and so and for a lot of people, love and abuse is the same. Same thing because you're getting right. hurt while they're saying, "I'm doing this while I love you." Is because right. right. And so it's really hard to separate those things because if you separate them and you begin to look at them for what they are you get a better understanding of everything around you. And also I've come to this realization about parents. Parents are people. Parents are mm -hmm. flawed people. Society yeah. raises us to put parents on a pedestal. Like our parents can never do no wrong. And I understand that because they raised you, they fed you and all that stuff, but they are flawed people. And once you look at your parent as an individual person, that life has came along and they've made different decisions. These decisions do impact you. But once you go, oh, you're a person that made these decisions, <clears throat> your perspective of them will change. Not that you got to forgive or have compassion. Or any, and it doesn't erase anything that they've done. But you just look at them very, very differently. You don't look at them from the eyes of a child. You look mm. at them from the eyes of another adult looking at another adult. Well, right. a lot of it is too, like the parent industrial complex, right? It's like mm -hmm. we're it's sold to you as like perfection. This is the, this is your God. This is the person that's going to do everything for you, <clears throat> protect you, blah, blah, blah. And it's only once you kind of become an adult that right. you can see like, Oh no, this was where they fucked up. Or even like, this is where they, this is, this is now the things that impacted them. That I understand. Correct. You know what I mean? like, right. like, it's like, you know, Oh, I see why they did what they did. You know, I was just whining and crying, but it was more behind this. Like I, I'm reading this, I was reading this book about poverty. And uh, one of the things that's interesting is like a, a vast, a big swath of children experience poverty as kids, mm -hmm. but most of us don't even fucking know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, mm -hmm. like, cause your parents do so much to protect you and you grow up. If you know, if you haven't seen certain things, you don't even have a purview of that being normal. So like, you like, yeah, everybody got government cheese. What's the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. And then, and then one day you're yeah, like, you 25. Like, hey, <laughs> you're like wait a minute bologna come in slices yeah everybody don't drink out of mason jars like no baby no baby mm -mm, mm -mm. so it's, it's 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 different that way man uh jordan i don't know if you're one of these what's next people but i gotta ask you know, <laughs> before man that's such a funny way to couch a question like that well, you man know what I'm saying? Do what we do over here. people but uh i gotta ask what's yeah. next yeah. Yeah. a lot of people that like that they're like Boom, boom, boom. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not a what's next nigga, and I feel like I want to put it on a t-shirt. Like I'm you, I'm low-key be going with the flow, but it, not that there's anything wrong with like ambition or right. planning or any of that, but I'm low-key kind of like, I don't know, we'll see what happens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, what what is if you're a what's next person, what, what are you looking at next? Um, I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of enjoying 
trying to learn how to enjoy something like where it is right now. Like I'm developing stuff, but you know, that can be difficult while you're already working. Yeah. So I'm just trying to like keep a healthy outlook on it. Um, I definitely want to develop this grandma show more. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be like, I mean, for what it's worth, I mean, I'm, I'm not even like minimizing it in any way. I just, I don't, I don't know what that looks or really feels like until I see it. But mm -hmm. because of the quarantine, so many things were pushed. So Maisel, Atlanta and Abbott will all be competing in the same Emmys. Yeah. Because I, I wrote for all three of them. I'll, I think I'll be like triple, I'll probably be like triple nominated. That's dope. Oh, through. Hey, so like, that means sure you that's could come up there with, did that mean you could come up there with a different group of people? So like, is it, you have to worry about who you sit with? chances to lose to um, Ted Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> to Amelie in Paris and shit. I, I feel you, yeah. but I'm just saying, it, it, like, do you have to make a decision where to sit? You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to be like, oh, I'm gonna sit next to the Abbott people. Don't oh, take you know, like, I'm not sitting with anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'll sit. I definitely think uh, I would sit um, with Abbott people. And then that's cool because then I'm gonna be looking on TV for the visual of like, if Atlanta wins, it's like one nigga coming from way over here. Like that's Jordan. That's Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> He's making his way to stage. You know what about table sixty seven? Wait for him to get on stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's dope, man. I hope you yeah. hope you win for all three, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, you know, I, yeah. I hope, I'm rooting for everybody. I hope y'all are nominated for all kinds of like best outfit, best mm -hmm. best niggas, makeup, mm -hmm. best you know, best whatever, niggas, yeah, like whatever best it takes, bro. We rooting for <laughs> you now. We know you now. You know hey, I, mean? I appreciate y'all. This is this is a this is a great way to start my Saturday. And oh. uh, y'all got <laughs> Sunday, but yes, I meant oh. Yeah. <laughs> I said, we're going back see, a day. See, that's how fun y'all are, though. <laughs> we feel like a Saturday, you know what I'm saying? Like a, it's a three-day weekend, so it does feel yes. like a second yes. Saturday. Get out here and see Top Gun and support this white man. Uh... <laughs> man with, how American is it that the, after the week we had the most popular movie would be Top Gun? Right. right. That's, that's dark. <laughs> that is so America. That is so American. It really it can't be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. next week. Uh mass shooting will be number one in the in the theater. <laughs> God, we ain't shit, bro. <laughs> but it does look dope. I am gonna go see that. Oh, yo. Yeah, I heard good things about it because at first I was like, I don't know. Then everybody was like, it's good. They so definitely, I guess. it's some new shit happening now. I've noticed it with Doctor Strange too. They put out that first trailer and they know it's not the hot fire it could be. Right. But then they put pressure on you with that when it come out. They always drop a second trailer that have some spoiler shit in it. Like, we told your ass. And then it's like, fuck, I got to go see it. Because with the Top Gun, they dropped this new trailer and it's a bunch of dog fights. And I was like, well, nigga, shit, that's what I wanted to see. This classroom shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> the Michael <laughs> Vick cut. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, like, ain't nobody about the class. Like, the first trailer was him in the classroom, like, I'm gonna teach y'all cadets. And it's like, who the fuck you think you are? Like, oh, I'm, I'm Maverick. I'll like, oh, fuck you, nigga. The second one is like, oh shit, this nigga just flew into a bridge. I'm like, well, yes. And he Tom Cruise running. You know why I came. Yeah, Doctor Strange, the, the, the fucking Friday it came out, it was like, oh yeah, by the way, she killed uh the Illuminati or some shit. You like, these niggas was in the movie? Well, why yeah. wasn't this in the first trailer, you know? I saw everything everywhere all at once. I'm not trying to see Doctor yes. Oh, I saw that too. I love like, it. That's my favorite movie of the year. That movie slaps. It's yes. done, don't it? Yo, I cried yes. at Two Rocks talking. Oh, two that's hard. That was yeah. hard. <laughs> I mean, I still watch Doctor Strange, though. You know, if you watch Marvel movies, it's like curriculum at this point. You, oh, word. You start, you start missing classes. You ain't gonna know what's happening the next mm -hmm. movie. You gonna show up in you gonna show up in Thor like yo who the fuck? <laughs> yeah, nah, that's, it's it's yeah it goes far. 
I do yeah. love Wanda. I do love me some Wanda. Oh, uh, if you mm-hmm. love you some Wanda, you're gonna eventually end up saying this. That's a bad, yeah. that's a bad woman right there. Though. Yeah, she bad. She bad. Hey, she mm-hmm. boy, listen, that was like that was one of that movie. My it, it low key could have been marketed as the Scarlet Witch movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, they should have made yeah. it that. Yeah, low key <laughs> it could have been called the Scarlet Witch because it she it went she went hard, bro. Uh now now that you I, I'm not trying to sell you on this movie. I know you just said you're not gonna see it, but when you do see it eventually, because all Marvel things must be seen, when you do see it, <laughs> you're going to be like, oh, okay. I see why he was so hyped that day, because damn, uh, Scarlet Witch went off. Um, well, yo, where can... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. no, no. Just, Are I'm you doing... Hyped, um... I, was hyped. I was getting hype up for Scarlet Witch. When she almost cut Thanos, I was like, okay. Nigga! <laughs> Nick, bro, wait till yeah. you see this movie. Wait yeah. till you see this fucking movie, bro. And the, Yo. o- and the only thing that stopped her, Thanos was like, "Hey, niggas! Hey, niggas! Shoot this bitch! Shoot this yeah. bitch!" He was stressed. Yeah. He was stressed. Yes, like he was fighting like eight niggas at the same time. Fine. She was like, uh, she started fucking him up. He was like, "I don't even know you." She's like, "Oh, you gonna remember this, nigga?" Yeah. He she was, was like, like, "You stole something from me." <laughs> he right, was like, right, 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 right. <laughs> Man said, you don't even hey, know me, but you gotta die. <laughs> this nigga was you called Remember Me. He you was calling the chips me. in. Yo, he's like, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. He was crying. What, what uh is it uh I'ma get you sucker? Where uh uh Jaleesa from uh the this is how I remember Black Dawn, uh with Jaleesa from um uh uh, uh, uh different world uh slammed uh slammed Damon Wayne's up against the window. And she had like that poltergeist strength and shit because yes. she was on her period. And he started screaming like, help, get this bitch out of me! <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what they also said. Help! He was on his ass. She was on his ass. Anyway, you're going to love this movie. Jordan, um, <laughs> tell, tell the people where to find you, man. Um, Find me out in them streets. Okay. Um, Run up on them. <laughs> On the Twitters at Jordy Ploy. Yeah, there you go. I might get Instagram soon. Probably not. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, apparently, does it does it seem do, do do women seem to like offline guy? That's what they say. But I'm like, but also women should be offline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think they like offline guys because you could tell when they post a picture of them. They always crop his face out. Yeah, you you only you only <laughs> see things like his hands, like you know he exists, but they you don't, don't never know he. They don't, he's not in the background. They don't tag him. Oh, I guess it's because I guess it's because also men men are also worse online. Yeah, to, yeah. In general, and also to women, so it's like right. yeah, and, guys offline. He's yeah. my favorite is when they post him and be like, and don't even ask. You don't got Instagram, I'm like yeah. right. <laughs> 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 Yeah. There's some shark shit going on on Instagram, yeah. dog. That's like you know what kind of shark you gotta be to be following your home girl to hope she posts her man by accident so you could like get them. That's some shark shit. Mm-hmm. Mm. And yeah, and uh, the thing about Instagram for a lot of people, they're like, uh, yeah, if we break up, I don't want to have to deal with the public thing that goes because then you got yeah. to follow it. Like it's a, like I said, I'm from a different generation, but it's a whole ass ordeal. You usually could just break up. Now we got to break up online. We got right. to break up on Facebook and Twitter. We got to untag each other. We got to remove the pictures. Yeah. It's a whole a, ordeal. Got to release a joint what? statement and shit. Right. It's a lot now. Um, Jordan, are you going to get, are you doing any stand up or like, mm. how's that work? When I feel like it, when, no. my friends, when my friends tell me to come out the crib, I, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, you know, them people, people be like, man, he funny as shit. Where he at? Oh, where, oh, where can I find, oh, where'd you go? <laughs> you like you like me you sound like me leaving a party every party i've been to <laughs> Yo, he was cool what happened to him <laughs> yeah before people realize yeah i'll just be going away i don't know uh yeah i'll be doing it here and there mostly i'm just developing the grandma show and then i'm bringing i'm bringing the sweet lorraine show to new york in november for new york comedy festival so i'm doing two shows at union hall yeah Oh, make sure y'all support my man. I know we all just met, but I feel like we family now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, y'all are great. I appreciate you. 
Oh man, anytime, anytime man. Anytime, you, baby. If you ever need to promote yeah. something or whatever, feel free to Let come back, know. hit us up. Mm-hmm. Um, and just email me after you see that um Doctor Strange, dog, because you're gonna really be like, <laughs> yo, this nigga wasn't joking about Wanda, dog. She they finally gave her her due, dog. She, she that that's that nigga. All right, that's it. All right, y'all. We'll talk to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to y'all later in the week. Until then, I love you. I love you too. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Thank Bye, you, Joy.